At one after midnight every day, Fu Ming Zhuo drives to a market with his vegetables, kickstarting his hectic day. The reason why he hurries his way so early is to sell the vegetables at a better price.我儿子大了吗 Fu Ming Zhuo hopes the new home can be completed by the end of the year, when his son brings home his girlfriend. Then it would look good and give the young couple confidence to their future life. To Chinese farmers, houses are not only a shelter against wind and rain, it's the root and vein for a family, and an important symbol of fortune and a quality of life.就好了In today's countryside across China, villas can be found everywhere. They are all built by farmers themselves as they have more income. To those who have been newly rich, it's quite satisfactory to build a two-story house. With income increasing and public facilities being improved, the quality and functions of the homes built by farmers themselves have been ameliorated. The kitchen, washroom, water supply, and drainage system, which could only be accessed by city dwellers before, can be enjoyed by more and more farmers now. Still, those houses built by the farmers cannot compete with the ones in urban areas. Zheng Rongli is a young architect with the China Rural Construction Research Institute. Since 2012, he has been in charge of the planning of several rural renovation projects. In 2014, 
he was invited by the local government to this place, known as Xiao Chu Wan. We in old traditional times, there were various architectural styles for villages across China. But these residential buildings do not fit modern life anymore. Moreover, the cost of architectural design and construction is rather high. Therefore, the farmers have not kept the traditional elements when they build their own houses. Lack of planning and matching facilities are common problems with rural residential buildings. Although farmers are not satisfied with the houses, they themselves do not have the ability to make any changes. In the process of remodeling this village, the government launched favorable policies, which subsidized those who joined the renovation program. For a long time, rural homes have mainly been built, maintained, and used by farmers themselves. In recent years, however, local governments have been strengthening subsidies to the remodeling of dangerous and dilapidated residential buildings in rural areas. Mr. and Mrs. Wan Li Wang are attracted to these new policies and are among the first wave to apply for the renovation of their home. General Rong Li has talked to them a number of times to better understand their needs in order to customize their new home. He just asked me two words, that is, what do you want to change? There are two ideas. One is... According to Zheng Rongli's design principles, the core is to make rural buildings more rural rather than urban. Zheng Rongli studied the local residential culture and decided to revive the Jingchu style, the traditional style. Jingchu style is the most important part of the Jingchu style. It is the most important part of the Jingchu style. It is the most important part of the Jingchu style. And the Jingchu style, like the Jingchu style, the Jingchu style, the Jingchu style, and the Jingchu style, 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 给呈现出来，在这面墙上面就体现了很多种变化，像这些木头的花，就是属于那个金属风格那种小工艺范围内的。Currently, the remodeling project is in the last stage. In the short space of one year, the whole village has changed its look dramatically.
可是你欠了两千。那一亩地大概可以赚多少钱啊？一亩地是五千斤左右。五千斤，那就三万块钱啊！哎，这个效益还是你这个好啊。In fact, the village features less land, but more people, with per capita land less than one mu. Before, local villagers were not rich, but after a sudden disaster a few years ago, everything changed. The disaster itself presented an opportunity. 二零幺年八月就洪灾，我们那里房子变成了现在的核心，我们那些的房子冲了。Xin Yingyao and her colleagues had a discussion, and they felt that to take actions of disaster relief would be less beneficial than to take the advantage of it by turning it to something good. A decision was made by the village to get the funding through a bank loan to build a residential community for the farmers. The land saved would be used as additional land to grow fruits. We have to build houses in the middle of the road. We have to build houses in the middle of the road. We have to build houses in the middle of the road. We have to build houses in the middle of the road. We have to build houses in the middle of the road. We have to build houses in the middle of the road. We have to build houses in the middle of the road. 在小区的房子都是五人户，都是一样大的，只有三个户型，三人户是一百二，四人户是一百五，五人户就是一百八。我们这的房子，你把你每家每户都可以去看，全部都装在给城里面一模一样，因为它水电气都通了，它的生活一样了，粮食卫生跟以前两个比起大幅度的不一样，全部都变化好大。Various changes in the village are beyond the expectations of many. And some migrant workers chose to resettle to their hometown because of the changes. The change was big. The whole village's social conditions and living conditions are much better. Sitting in it, I feel like I'm sitting in a garden. To Chinese farmers. It's their inseparable tie to live in their hometown, farming and living on the land they are familiar with. In today's China, a lot of rural areas are exploring similar models, living in a concentrated area that is planned as a whole. Gathering farmland together is an effective solution to the problem of a huge population working on a small amount of land and the shortage of resources. 就是原来呢，我们这个农村啊是非常松散的，在建设方面没有规划。哎，我们这个农村设计化之后，我们是经过规划的，这样呢，我们可以腾出大量的土地来，这也是符合我们国情的。But to a large country with such a vast area like China, there isn't any cookie cutter model. To improve the housing quality and living standard for over 600 million farmers in total who are scattered across China, there is a long way to go. This is a common village deep in the mountainous area in the middle of China. Most residents here are of the Tuja minority nationality. For generations, they have lived in stilted buildings, which is typical scenery of the place. Qingwa, Feiyan Qiao Jiao. This is Tuja. From the outside, you can see. This is Tuja people's culture. 也是活化石，几百年、几千年传承下来。To inconvenient transportation, economic development of the village has lagged behind for a long time. The income of the villagers remained low, and houses are dilapidated. In the vast areas in mid and western China. 
such villages take up a big portion. Compared with the rural areas in eastern China, these places look like they're in a totally different time. Mei Ling Xin grew up in Arguanjai village. Upon her graduation in 2012, she returned to her hometown and settled down, working as an administrative clerk. She found that housing had not improved much in the past decades. Many homes had become dangerous and shabby. Meanwhile, the farmers do not have the ability to improve their own homes as they wish. In 2009, Mei Ling Chin learned that the Enshu municipal government would remodel the dangerous buildings in Arguanjai village with a favorable policy that is elaborate and hierarchical. However, what is worrying is the damage to the local traditional architectural style. To address this concern, the government stipulates that to qualify for a subsidy, renovations or additions must keep the stilt style of the Tuja architecture. Chibi After the remodeling construction, the Arguanjai village not only takes on a new look, but more importantly, attracts outside tourists with its Tuja culture. Quite a few villagers have started a home-based food and lodging business, making more income. China can be proud of the achievements in housing in the past decades, covering cities and the countryside. However, there are still serious trials, especially when it comes to remodeling ancient towns and streets with a long history. Such refurbishment projects are very challenging. With accelerating urbanization and incessantly growing population, the transformation from the old to the new is a lengthy and difficult process. Sinongxi Street is the oldest street of Chang'an town, and it's being renovated. As we can see, most of the houses here have been worn down through the years without proper repair. The streets are narrow and disordered, losing its manner as an ancient town. Now, the house of the old man, Jingjiang Shen, is under renovation. 
with the principle of repairing the old while keeping its old looks and of recovering the appearance of an old house as much as possible. This is one of the remodeling projects of the old town. The Luotang River running next to the old town is a branch of the Grand Canal. In 2014, when the river was approved for its World Heritage status, intensive facelifting to its surrounding areas was started, and Sinongxi Street was the priority of the renovation. Not far from Jinjiang Shen's house, the refurbishment work of the first ancient building has been completed. This house has a history of over 140 years and was moved to the riverside from somewhere not far. This in order to improve the living situation of the local residents when the renovation is going on, at the back of the ancient street, a large number of welfare houses are built. Those who owned a house at the ancient street can exchange for a welfare home at a rate of one to one. This is a common practice in China in terms of refurbishing ancient streets. Zheng Da Zhang over 80 years old, is a veteran who fought in the war to resist U.S. aggression and to aid Korea. He moved into his new home in 2013. <laughs> Before he moved in, Zheng Da Zhang had worked for nearly 30 years in an old area of the ancient town called Wu Yoba. The living conditions there bothered him a lot. <laughs> In fact, Wu Yoba is located in a tourist area. It's close to the famous giant stone Buddha at Lushan Mountain. Lushan City, where Wu Yoba is situated, is in the southwest of Sichuan Province, and it is the only city in China that has three World Heritage Sites. Due to its unique natural advantage in tourism resources, the hospitality industry is one of its pillar industries. But the old district has long failed to meet the functional requirements, and it does not fit the image of a tourist city. In 2010, to build a city suitable for living and to protect the local living conditions while tapping into its tourism resources, the renovation construction to the ancient district of Lushan City was launched in full gear, with Wu Yoba in the giant stone Buddha area being the key target.
This community, called Modeled Bamboo Impression, is Lushan City's largest welfare housing district. The first immigrants from Wuyoba Remodeling Project are arranged to live here. In Wuyoba, a new shopping street in imitation of an ancient street is under construction. Part of it has already opened to the public. In the future, this will be a key site for the giant stone Buddha tourist attraction. With the improvement of the power of China, renovation projects of ancient districts have started across China. In addition to protecting the basic living conditions, people also attach considerable emphasis to traditional cultures, cherishing them and hoping to revive them. The choice of new or old is no longer a choice of having one while losing the other. Rather, the traditional and the modern cultures can coexist, both being the mainstream value.房屋倒塌交通破坏包括后面在地震以后发生剧烈的次生灾害对整个城市应该是一种毁灭性的打击全部倒塌了嘛还有红下去了嘛南面山红下来就跑到里面了哪个城面出了说哪个是随便拉开
这种全国人民啊对灾区的一种亲情奉献，感受一种社会主义大家庭的温暖在里面。这就体现了我们国家这个人民团结友爱，一方有难八方支援，中国人民都是。祖国的子孙，这种亲情感情，说老实话，硬是难以言表。Today, the Beichuan Chang people gather at Banacha to celebrate the New Year of the Chang Calendar. It's the most important traditional festival in a year. People offer sacrifices to their ancestors in their traditional ways handed down over thousands of years. They express their gratitude to the beauty and favor of life. The rebirth of Beichuan New Town is like a miracle. And this miracle shows the courage and ability that Chinese people have as they march towards the future. Housing 1.3 billion people is a challenge unprecedented in the history of mankind. Although there will be unpredictable difficulties and barriers in the road ahead, China is hopeful and confident, marching firmly forward to happiness and serenity.